What's up y'all? I'm Tom and this is Like a Math Class. In this video we're going to look at special right triangles. What makes these triangles so special? Well these are the triangles that we use most frequently when we are building the unit circle and talking about various angles and ratios in trigonometry. So let's get to it and figure out what these special right triangles are. So here we've got a right triangle, and, and not only is this a right triangle, but this is an isosceles right triangle, which means that these two sides are the same length. If those two sides are the same length, that means these two angles are the same length. So this is actually a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So we'll, we'll call this one 45, 45, 90. So in this 45, 45, 90, we've got two sides that are the same, and we're gonna make this hypotenuse, we're gonna make this a value of one. So if we've got these two unknown sides, and they're the same, we can call them both x. So now how do we solve, or how do we find what the proportions are of these two sides to this hypotenuse when it is a value of one? Well, we can use our old friend, the Pythagorean theorem. So we've got x squared plus x squared equals one squared, which means we've got two x squared equaling one. x squared is gonna equal one half when I divide both sides by two. And then once I take the square root of both sides, then I'm gonna have x equaling the positive or negative square root of one half. Half. Now, we're talking about sides of a triangle. Since we're talking about sides of a triangle, you can't have a negative distance, you can't have a negative side, so we're only gonna look at the positive side. And so that means we're gonna have x equaling the square root of one half. So let's go down here where we've got a little bit more space to work. We know from our rules of exponents that if you've got the square root, that's the same thing as one half, right? So our square root of one half is equal to one half to the one half power. Now this one half out here is for this square root. But if we have two different bases being divided and they're going to the same exponent, then that exponent can be applied to both the numerator and the denominator. So this actually equals one to the one half power over two to the one half power. Well, one to any power is still gonna be one, so that's gonna be one over two, and two to the one half power, we already said, is square root of two. So that's gonna be square root of two. Now, in this day and age, a lot of times, uh, we allow one over square root of two. But when I was going to school, that was a no-no. You didn't have the square root in the denominator. I think for IB courses, you're still allowed to leave it as one over square root of two, but like I said, I'm kind of old school, so the way that I learned it is you need to rationalize that denominator. You can't have or you shouldn't have a square root in the denominator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply this by a value of one. I'm gonna scale it up by a value of one. Now we know anything over itself is one, and so I'm specifically choosing square root of two over square root of two. Anything over itself is one. By doing this, I now have one times the square root of two, which is the square root of two, and then I've got the square root of two times the square root of two, which is two. So now I've got, let's move this over. So what I now have is x is equal to the square root of two over two. So for a 45, 45, 90 triangle, these two sides are both equal to the square root of two over two. And, and the hypotenuse is gonna be a value of one. So here are our values for a 45, 45, 90 triangle. That's important because when we take this and apply it to the unit circle, you're gonna see where those values go and what they mean in terms of the unit circle. Now, before we get to the next triangle, make sure you give me a like and help spread this out to everyone else who's trying to learn about trigonometry and special right triangles. Thanks, I appreciate it. Now over here for this other triangle, we have an equilateral triangle. Now I checked very closely to make sure that this was the same length as this, and they are, and we're gonna call this an equilateral triangle with sides of unit one. With any equilateral triangle, if you take this and you drop this down to make a right angle here, this not only bisects these angles, but it also bisects this side. 
So now down on the bottom, instead of one, we actually have a value of one half over here and a value of one half over here. And it, since this was an equilateral triangle, that meant that all of our angles were 60 degrees. 60, 60, well, and I just said that this one got cut in half, so that's gonna be 30 degrees in 30 degrees. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna focus on just this one side. You know what, let's just color that in. Once again, we have a right triangle with 30, 60, and 90 for our angles. So this will be a 30, 60, 90 triangle. That's what this one is. We'll box this one off over here too. So once again, we know this is one, we know this is one half, but we don't know this side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call that side our X now. It's not the same X as in our 45, 45, 90 triangle. I just used X because that's the variable I chose. That's all. So if we want to find what the value of X is, we're once again gonna use our Pythagorean theorem. We've got x squared plus one half squared equals one squared. So x squared plus one fourth is equal to one. Now, if I subtract one fourth from both sides, that's like subtracting from four fourths. So I'm left with x squared equaling three fourths. I take the square root of both sides. Once again, I'm gonna get a positive and negative value for my x but since I can only have a positive distance, I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna have the square root of three over, well, the square root of four is two, so it's gonna be over two. So x here is equal to the square root of three over two. So now I have three values of one, square root of three, and one half. Now, why do I need these three sides? Why do I need to know what the ratios are compared to these different angles? If I've got sine of 45 degrees now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on these, this bottom corner right now. Sine of this, of this 45, is gonna be opposite over hypotenuse. So that's gonna equal just square root of two over two. It's square root of two over two over one, but we know that that's just gonna be square root of two. And if I look at cosine of 45, well, cosine is gonna be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. That's also gonna equal then the square root of two over two. So here are two ratios that we will know and that you will learn to love or not love, but you'll learn it. And these are gonna be values that you're gonna see regularly. Over here from our 60 degree angle, if I wanted to look at this angle here, then my sine of 60 is gonna be square root of three over two over one. So that's gonna equal square root of three over two. Cosine of 60 is going to equal, well, cosine of this is gonna be one half over one. So that's gonna equal one half. Well, cosine of 60 is gonna be adjacent side over hypotenuse, so that's gonna equal one half. All right, so here are two more sets of angles for 60 degrees. And what if, what if we were to take this whole triangle and kind of rotate it where we had it kind of looking like this? Maybe I can, maybe I can draw this real quick. Here I drew this same triangle, but I just rotated it. So now here is my root three over two. Here is that same 90 degrees, and this is still a value of one right here, and this is gonna be one half here. So that means our 30 degrees is down here and our 60 degrees is now up here. But now if we look at, okay, what is sine of 30 degrees? Okay, so sine of 30 degrees now is gonna be one half over one. So that's gonna be one half. And cosine of 30 is gonna be the adjacent side over one. So that's gonna equal root three over two. So here now we have two more trig ratios. So we actually have three sets of trig ratios that we're gonna use when we get to the unit circle. So these values are gonna, you're gonna see 
over and over and over again. If you're ever looking at the unit circle, this is where this comes from. So if you're like, well, wait, where did we get square root of two over two again? You can come back to this video and you can kind of flip through it real fast and say, ah, okay, here's where these values are coming from.